a decent gap between them and the eight. Gus, there has been some blips across the radar in the career of Trent Robinson in the decade at the Roosters. Started with the Premiership, 2018 and 19 went back to back. Is this his toughest challenge yet, though? Yeah, look, it never always goes swimmingly. You can't be great all the time. They're not robots. Uh, they're human beings. And uh, this year is a mystery. Uh, they started the season with arguably one of the best rosters in the competition. Everyone was predicting big things for them. And they've never really got going. They're spinning their wheels the whole time. It's never really settled down into any sort of rhythm. Um, they haven't been consistent. There's been a couple of narrow losses and a couple of very narrow wins up at the bottom side. So it's... It's kind of like they're just struggling to, to match it with everyone at the moment and only seven wins at this stage of the competition is not where we expected them to be. Um, as to what's caused that, well, you'd have to be inside the inner sanctum to, to really know what's going on in there. Can you pinpoint uh, it, the, the list of problems? There's, there's plenty yeah, there. Yeah, there's, there's a list answers? of problems. I actually sat down today and wrote them down. I, I, thought, I straight away thought about their side and where they're at and their spine. Look at their spine. Their spine's been so, um, um, I suppose, a major part of their success over the years. Tedesco's had his best season. They've changed their halves. They've had Kiri, Walker, Sand and Smith, Manu and Hutchinson in the halves. They've, they've mixed their hooker around. So I feel like their spine's been mixed around. Ted, Teddy's not in the best form, as we know, this season. So I feel like their spine has been mixed around a fair bit. You throw on top of the Swaley contracts is issues. We've had Crichton with issues. Um, and I just feel like with all their issues, the, their injury list is enormous at the moment. Uh, I just feel all, all that said... They've just lost what the Roosters, to me, were about. The Roosters, to me, were always a real tough, resilient side. They were very, very tough in the forwards. I just feel like now they're in the game, or they're in the game to a certain degree, and then when something goes against them, they seem to, they seem to just fall apart. I really find it when Jarrah's not on the ground, um, you know, they lack a little bit of forward leadership there. I don't know if they thought some of the young guys that were coming up had probably maybe not come to the level they thought they would have, um, but I, just, I feel like they're just not the Roosters, and... As I said, whenever I played against the Roosters, they were an incredibly tough side and they were incredibly resilient. No matter what you did, they'll always be in the fight right to the 80th minute. I just feel like at the moment they're, they're not always in the fight. I, I think their kicking game's not great. I watched some of their games. I don't feel like they're... they're because they're going to change their halves around so much. I don't, their hookers don't kick a lot of a dummy half. I just feel like their, their halves haven't got the best kicking game this year either. So... That's a hell of a lot of problems. It, it uh, is. It's where that's why they are where they are in the ladder. Well, leading into the season, Danny, two issues that were either going to turn into something really special or go the other way. The, the move from Brandon Smith mm. coming from the Melbourne Storm and also, uh, obviously, Joseph Swaliti and his future as well. And uh, both issues haven't gone away. Well, look, I think... Let's start with the Smith one. Um, I think a lot of people at that club are, are questioning that signing now. Um, they let go Sam Verrills, who was a, a very good player, uh, not as... Uh, big a name as Brandon Smith, but there is no question Brandon Smith has not fitted in well at the club so far. I'm not saying he won't in the future, but as they have not got their value out of Brandon Smith. Uh, the other issue is the Joseph Suali'i one. Uh, he, I, I'd be very surprised if he's at the club next year. Uh, Gus got in a, a lot of trouble for <laughs> saying you know, he should be out of the game now. I think privately the Roosters would concede that Gus is right that they probably should have taken action once he signed with Rugby Union. I'm not blaming Joseph Suwali in any way for the Roosters' season, but the distraction has been massive uh, and they probably should have acted earlier. Uh, we've seen Sam Walker as well, um, dropped, uh, injured. Uh, he's an issue as well. And as Gal said, uh, the kicking game for the Roosters and the, the halves haven't worked. And I think the Roosters will look at every aspect of their... Uh, organisation, uh, particularly around the attacking area, and I think there'll be some changes there. Uh, Gus, is Brendan Smith a hooker or a back rower? Uh, he's a back rower, I believe. I don't think he's a, a standout hooker. I think he combined really nicely with Harry Gant at the Melbourne Storm. They had a, a dual role there. Harry Grant, whenever he ran from dummy half, Brandon would get the dummy half and go again, and they had a double-pronged attack out of there, which was very effective for them with Munster and Jerome Hughes and Pappenhausen and the like supporting those. Brandon Smith is a dynamic player. I don't think anyone was raising their eyebrows at the signing when they first announced it, um, but it was pretty obvious that if he was going to be the standalone hooker, it was going to mean a big change to the way they play the game, mm. and it just hasn't worked for them. Plus, he's been missing for, for a number of weeks as well. Gus, I wrote at the time that um, when Brandon Smith left Melbourne, Craig Bellamy was quite happy with it. Um, that has been disputed, um, yeah. but they were not unhappy with his decision to go to the Roosters. I think Craig Bellamy, uh, I don't know if he'll ever publicly say it, but privately uh, found Smith, uh, probably his time was up at the Storm, and he was happy to have him out of the club. Yeah. Brandon Smith, as I said at the time, he treats his body like a Jeep, uh, both on and off the field. You know, he's, he's, he's a wholehearted 
aggressive footballer. I don't know what his life's like away from rugby league. Down in Melbourne, they're in a little bit of a... Um, you know, they're not in the fishbowl down there. They're sort of on their own. You don't hear much about what the Melbourne players are like down there. Uh, in Sydney, it's far more scrutinised by media and fans and, and, and the like. So I, I, I can't speak about Brandon Smith off the field, um, but you only hear the stories. And whether or not it's a little bit of oil and water there at the Roosters, I don't know. Whether or not he and his personal life just isn't... Football's not his priority at the moment, I don't know. But there's obviously something going wrong because he hasn't clicked with them and they haven't clicked with him. Yeah.